Screen Directors Playhouse. Stars, James Stewart, Jeff Chandler, Deborah Paget. Production, Broken Arrow. Director, Delmar Daves. <laughs> Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present, transcribed, an adventure between war and peace. Here is our adaptation of Broken Arrow, as James Stewart, Jeff Chandler, and Deborah Paget recreate their original screen roles of Jeffords, Cochise, and Sonsiere. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the first act of Broken Arrow. This is the story of a land of the people who lived on it and fought a war in the year 1870, and of a man whose name was Cochise. He was an Indian, a member of the Shirakawa Apache tribe. This is his story and my story. I'm Tom Jeffords, and it happened just as you'll hear it, except that it's all in our language. And it began one night up in the Apache country where I'd been prospecting for gold. I'd been asleep. I woke up to feel the hand on my throat and to see the Apache face in the moonlight. Psst. Do not cry out. Huh? What? It is Juan from Tucson. Juan? What the devil? I'll find your place. Yeah, scare the life out of me. What's a tame Apache doing in this country? Message from Colonel Parnell. New commander at Fort Grant. He wants you. Oh, no, no. I'm not in the army anymore. He wants you, Captain Jeffords, to scout to make war on Apaches. Uh, they never get enough, do they? Civil war, Indian war, they never get enough. You'll come to Tucson tomorrow. Oh, all right. I'll tell him myself. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I go now. This very dangerous place for me. Yeah, for both of us. All right. See you tomorrow. <laughs> I think I slept any more that night, but I guess I did. Because when I woke up that morning, I found I had a second Indian visitor. A boy lying on his stomach about 15 feet away from me. He had a knife in his hand. His arm was flung out in my direction. His back was a bloody mess. Buckshot. Well, Sonny, you're pretty badly off. Apache. Walter. Open your eyes, boy. White eye. Kill. Let go of that knife. I could have killed before. Here now. Drink. Good water. You're lucky it doesn't spray out of your back like a sieve. See those wounds? No. What, are you afraid of pain? Apache is never afraid. All right, then let's have a look. Hmm. Yeah, it's nothing serious. There's danger of infection. What's your name? Machoke. How many years has Machoke? Fourteen. Who shot you? White eyes. You're on war party? No, this is novice time for me. I learned to be a man. I, I take trips. Ah. You would have been very proud to kill me. Yes. Too much killing. All right, I help you. Maybe sometime you help White Eye. No, I kill. Fourteen years old. All right, let's boil some water for those wounds. The back, is it any better? A little bit. I must go now. Ah, it's still weak. Better wait. No, I have been away a long time. In the village, my mother is crying. Were you? My brother and sister were killed at Big Creek. I am the only one. I think Pionsene, my father, looks for me. Ah. Well, then go with the gods. 
I pray to the gods for you, White Eye. Well, thank you, boy. I'll travel slowly. You remember your back. Hey, that arrow. It is a warning. Here, stand back. Put away your gun. They could have killed. I don't trust them. Where are they? The gun. Give it to me. They see I am unharmed. Here. Come. This white eye is my friend. Since when does my son take a white man as his friend? My father. He, he helped me. To become a tame Apache? See my back. Johnson, I take your son. I will take the white eye. No. He healed me. Gave me water. Why did you do this, white one? He is a child. He is an Apache. The Hills, he says that we fight a war. Why did you not slay him? Killing children isn't my way. I fought once in much war, between whites and against Indians. Now my stomach is full and sick of war. You have spared my son. We will spare you this time. But do not come again, white eye. Never. I promise next time we kill. As if it had never happened, I was riding my horse again, riding back to Tucson. I learned things that day. I learned that Apache mothers cried for their sons, that Apache fathers loved their children. And I learned that Apache men had a sense of fair play. It gave me a lot to think about and to talk about at Tucson. Damn it! just doesn't seem reasonable for Indians to act like that. Well, that's where it happened, Melt. Not just the saloon store. Well, it's worth a drink on the house. Hey, O'Connor! Hey, forget it. I've already got the dust up in my mouth. Shepherds? Couldn't help hearing. My name's Slade. Oh, yeah. Last week, the Apaches burned my home. My wife was in it. Oh, I'm sorry. You're trying to make them out, gentlemen? That's the way it happened, Mr. Slade. Uh, Tom, there's Colonel Bernal. Probably wants you. All right. I'll see you at the post office later, Mel. Colonel Bernal? You're Jeffords? I, uh, heard you wanted me, Colonel. I want a good scout. I've just been given command of Fort Grant. Well, congratulations. My orders are to clean out Cochise. I'll need all the expert help I can get. Uh Uh-huh. Well, Colonel, there just isn't anybody that expert around here. I can back you up, Jeffords. I have 250 fresh men, disciplined troopers. Hmm, that's very nice. Too bad they're going to be dead soon. No, not this time. With the help of a few trained men like yourself, I'll have this war over in six months. No, you won't, Colonel. Now, see here, Jeffords, I know my business. So does Cochise. An ignorant savage. Yes, he's ignorant. He can't even read a map. But he and his warriors know every coyote and cactus in Arizona. My men are disciplined. Disciplined? For the first time in Indian history, he's got Apaches from all the tribes fighting together under the same command. Colonel... I want to see an end to this war, too. But in six months, you'll be transferred just as another failure. And I see I can't count on you. Good day, Jeffords. Jeffords? Yes, Mr. Slade? This whose side are you on, anyway? The side that'll end the fighting. And Cochise started it. Let him end it. Now, wait a minute. Now, let's get the facts straight. Cochise didn't start this war. A snooty little lieutenant started it. Flew a flag of truce which Cochise honored. And under it, he he hung Cochise's brother. How's it ever going to end unless we kill them all? It'll stop when one side just makes one small sign. I'll of... make my sign with a rifle. What else is there? I got a sister in the East. She'll never even know what happened to us out here. Can't even send her a letter. Can't even get the mail through. And yes. you want to... I just want to stop it all. Just one small sign. <laughs> You asked for me, Captain Jeffords? Yes, I need an Indian friend. Come on into the mail office, will you? Hello, Tom. Juan. Say, Melt, how long has it been since you've gotten the mail through Cochise's territory? Months. Well, you know, Melt, I'm not sure, but there may be a way to handle that mail with Juan's help. What do you want? I want you to teach me to speak Apache good. What for? Juan, 
I want to learn about Apache spirits. I want to learn Apache ways here in my head and here in my heart. No white man asked to learn these things. Why do you? I want to speak with Cochise. Tom, you're crazy. I've been willing to look for gold in Cochise's territory. Now I'll take a chance on finding something else. Cochise will not speak. We'll send smoke signals to him. He will not come. I'll go to him. To his stronghold? Yes. Tom, you know Apaches. Torture. And... I know Apaches. I met some yesterday. Cochise may talk. He may listen to reason about the males. That's the beginning. It might be the end, too. Well, Juan, will you help? I will teach you. But I think it will end bad. I think Cochise will kill you. I think so, too, Tom. Well, what's another life in all this massacre? We'll start today, Juan. In a month, I want to be ready. This is a radio network. It is a great web of contact spanning this entire land, touching now and then all peoples at all times. From the farmer starting his day at dawn to the young girl at a party, radio reaches everybody, and radio advertising sells all markets. Not only can advertisers talk directly to you by using radio, but it costs them less than other methods. Yes, network radio is a bargain to advertisers. It is also the only way to reach a truly national audience with a human voice. Advertisers spend money with NBC because they wish to reach the greatest possible number of people for the least possible cost, and with the force and persuasion of the human voice. Now the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Broken Arrow. She says it. I draw this line in the dirt. This is the way of the white soldiers. I draw this mountain in the dirt. There you will hide. I draw this sun in the dirt. When the sun is here, then you will attack. No white shall live. Cochise. Does Machogi not know it is not a boy's place in the council of war? He is here. The white man. The white man from Tucson? He who healed me. I gave him my word, the word of Nahilze. I swore he would die if he returned. Quiet, Nahilze. Go, all of you. But Choge, remain. Tell me of this man. He is not like other whites. Shall I have him killed? No. Because he helped you? Perhaps he wishes to harm all of us. Then if I were a great chief, if I were... Cochise, I would speak with him. I would read his heart. Your advice is good, little warrior. Show me where the white eye is held. You have brave eyes, tall one, for a man who may have but a little while to live. It is known that the chief of the Chiricahua Apaches is the greatest Indian leader. He must have a great heart. I speak to that heart now. Why have you come here? I speak of signals. We call them mail. The white man's signals, which he puts down on pieces of paper and sends from one place to the other. What of these? Well, now, the, the men who carry these signals seek no trouble. They make no trouble. Yet your warriors kill them. It is war. But these men are not warriors. I've come to ask that you let them travel in safety. Who sent you? No one. It was my own thought. This mail carries war signals against us. No, no. War signals are carried by the military. These are other things. And you, have you never fought against us? Yes. Yes, at the Battle of Apache Pass. 
And why should I not have you tortured? Because I come in peace with a straight tongue. My brother died when the white men spoke with a straight tongue. There are bad whites, but a wise man knows that not all people are bad. You are wise, Cochise, or you would not be the leader of your people. Perhaps in your heart is a spark, a hope that someday your people and mine will live together as brothers. Your people do not want peace. Tomorrow there must be peace. For us and for the Apaches, who each moon lose more warriors and bitter victories. Why should not the white man act first? You want me to be better than the white man? A white man has come here. Your words have truth in them. I respect you for coming here. You will rest with us tonight? Oh, that is my wish. I will think on these things, Talwood. Now walk with me in the village so my people will see us together. Your people have a ceremony tonight, Cochise. The spirits of good and evil are dancing. Oh, then tomorrow will be the rites of the sunrise for a young girl. You know of such things? I know a little bit. They were very different from other whites. The boy spoke the truth. I've learned some of your ways so that we could talk together. Then you must learn of the white painted lady. She is here inside this hut. This is the holiest time of her life. For this night, she is the mother of life. Yes. Tell me, do you have a sickness? No. Were you ever wounded? Yes, in my arm. We will tell her. For this night only, this girl is even more holy than most because she has been away for many years. She is old for this ceremony. It is very special. I can see her face in the firelight. She's very beautiful. We will talk to her now. White painted lady. Sancia Ray has waited for you, Cochise. I have old wounds. But each scar is a mark of love for your people. The path of your people is stretched long behind you. And you are the head. And you are the heart. And you are the blood. You will be well. I have brought a friend. He has an old arm wound. Then he is welcome. Was it... Is it all right? She asks for you. Thank you. Give me your arm. Does it hurt you? Sometimes. It will never hurt again. You do this for me? An enemy? The mother of life knows no enemies. And tomorrow, when you are no longer mother of life, when you're just a girl, will I be your enemy then? I cannot speak of tomorrow. Now go. You will live long. The good things will be yours. The sun will shine for you. What is your name? Sonsire. Sonsire. Morning star. Now you must go. Thank you, Sonsire. <laughs> Sonsire? Hello. Hello there. Good morning. Well, why do you hide in the bushes? Uh, I was afraid. Of what? Your knife. Oh, uh, knife? Oh. <laughs> oh, no. This is called a razor. I was just cutting the hair from my face. We call it shaving. I, I thought you were skinning yourself. Oh, no. <laughs> Does it hurt? Oh, no. No, I just look in this mirror. Mirror? And... Yes, yes. Here, take it. I think this is me. But it is much better than looking in a pool of water. It's yours to keep. No. No, please, please. You can see yourself every day. You could know how beautiful you are. Thank you. No, I cannot remain. Well, why not? It is not right for an unmarried woman to be seen with young men. Well, uh... How will I see you again? Sometimes young men and girls meet by accident. 
I see. Uh, well, Sonsiore, would would it be well if we met again by accident? Yes, I think so. Soon I must go again and talk with Cochise. I've come here to talk the truth with him and with all your people. And now I'd like to talk the truth with you, Sonsiore. All my life... I've been mostly alone. I wanted it that way. Can you understand that? Yes, that is often the way with me. And yet, when I saw you last night, and you touched me, and you prayed for me, I, I felt bad being alone. So I n knew that I needed to see you again before I left to find out if the feeling would be the same. Is it the same? Yes. So now when I go away, I'll be lonely. Shall a man with white skin be lonely for a girl with skin such as mine? Why must people be the same? Why, well, your skin is the color of honey and sun. It's so lovely. Beyond that, there's no thought. And the white girls, are, are they very beautiful? Some, some sire, yes. But never have I seen a woman as beautiful as you are to me. You call me Sonsiore, but how shall I call you? My name is Tom. Tom. Do I say it right? It was never said right before. Then I, I must go. Someone come. Tall one. Yes, I await the answer of Cochise. I have decided about the mail. The riders will be allowed to pass. Then you have done a fine thing. It will show the whites what power the Apache has. The idea makes me laugh a little. Well, I go now and tell this to my brothers. And will you come back here sometime? I wait for you to say it. It is my strong wish. I say it now. You are someone I can talk to. I am weary of what goes on in my head all the time. It's good here among your people, Cochise. I would like to be friends with you. And with Sonsire? She makes my heart glad. I saw the way your glance found her last night and this morning. That is not our way, Toa. Oh, I'm sorry, Cochise, but... I understand, but it is not our way. You will return. As friend to friend. A good bow is not made in a day or a good horse trained. It takes longest of all to make a friend. Come back, Toa. As soon as I can. And now I bring your word to Tucson... Soon the males will ride again and the whites will speak in big words of honor of Cochise. All right, and I'll tell you all about it, but just let me talk now. Tom, I sure didn't think it was possible. Well, it's possible, Melt. Now, Colonel Brunel, Juan, Slade, all of you. Cochise has given his word. The mails will go through. You mean to say he went right into his camp? That's it. I don't believe it. Well, you can take my word, Slade. And the word of an Apache murderer? The word of a proud man, a man of honor. A man of honor? Jeffers, while you were up there with Cochise, his fighters attacked a wagon train just 40 miles east of here. Every person on it was killed. Now, Cochise never said he was calling off the war. He just said the mail would go through. Tom Jeffers' word is good enough for me. I'm in charge of the mail, and I say it starts moving. And yeah, who's going to carry it then? Who's going to put his life in the hands of Cochise? All right, I'll carry the first load myself. Well, that won't prove anything. I don't think I understand you, Slade. You claim to be his friend. Maybe you were up in his stronghold. He'd let you through just... Shut to... up, Slade. I'll carry the first load myself. Thank you, Mel. I can't sit still any longer. Why doesn't Mel come back? Because he's dead, Jeffords. That's why. Take it easy, Slade. He's Jeffords' friend. Thank you, Colonel. No. I know he's all right. Cochise wouldn't lie. Cochise. <laughs> that's right. That's right. 
build up the hate, burn it into your guts, let the war go on and on and on, let your family finish it when you... I don't have any family. The Apaches took care of that. It's no use, Jeffords. There's only one way we'll settle it, with blood. But when Milt gets back, won't that prove anything? I don't think he's coming back. He's already a day overdue. Face it, Jeffords, we're in a war, and it's going to get tougher. General Howard has been posted in to take Fort Grant. A full general means more troops and a full-size campaign. Against what, ghosts? You can't fight it. Mel! We made it. Oh, Tom. Well, Slater, guess we were wrong. Well, did you have any trouble? Did you see any Apaches? No, no Apaches. Well, then it worked. Coach, he's kept his word, but what held you up? We're coming back. There was a wagon train, army escort for General Howard, cut to pieces. I found what was left. Oh, they... They are all dead? Almost all. Howard got through. A few others. Oh, this slaughter. Oh. Oh, but the mail got through. The mail got through. At least it's a beginning. I don't know, Tom. Everybody's pretty upset about it. They're looking for somebody to blame. White man working with Cochise. Well, that's crazy. Cochise doesn't need A white man any. working with Cochise. He's your friend, ain't he, Jeffords? That's what they're saying, Tom. He's your friend. But I... I... There, he there he is, the Indian lover. We got a rope for you, Jeffords. Now, listen, listen to me. Why should we listen to a spy? Yeah. Cochise no, gave his word about the mail, nothing more. If you have any hope of peace... You ain't gonna live to see any peace. Come on, bring that rope. Send him to Cochise. Release that Cochise man. Cochise a lesson. Yeah. He's a copperhead. He sold us out. Dirty Indian lover! As a general of the United States Army, I order you to release him. Now, look here, General. You Must can... I put you all under arrest? Now, leave us alone. All of you. Out of here. Well, I guess you're General Howard. And you're the man I've heard about. The man who went to face Cochise. Well, thanks for getting my head out of that noose. I don't want your gratitude. I want your help. Look, General... I'm no spy. And if you think... Jeffords, I've been sent from Washington with full power to make a peace with Cochise. But I can't do it without you. Well? You know, for a minute there, I almost began to hate white men. All right, General. Let's hear your story. If you wanted to sell your house or a car, you wouldn't send a piece of paper with your sales talk printed on it. You'd talk with a buyer yourself, because people sell better than paper. The voice is more persuasive than ink, and that's true in advertising, too. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone should use door-to-door -door salesmen. No, that's pretty expensive. A door-to-door -door salesman can make only about 20 calls a day. But there is a way advertisers can use the human voice and personality to make several million nationwide calls at one time. It's network radio. Radio is people. It's a grocery clerk or an automobile salesman multiplied millions of times. With network radio, people talk to more people at less cost than with any other method of advertising. And with better results. For people sell better than paper. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Broken Arrow, starring James Stewart, Jeff Chandler, and Deborah Paget, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for the fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, 
and by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. We continue transcribed with the third act of Broken Arrow, starring James Stewart, Jeff Chandler, and Deborah Paget in their original roles of Jeffords, Cochise, and Sonsiere. <laughs> No one wanted the war. No one wanted to stop the fighting. Not Cochise, not the whites. It was all a sacrifice to prestige and honor. And then this man came to Tucson, this General Howard. His hair was white. His eyes were tired. I knew he'd fought in a lot of battles. But he talked of peace. And I thought of Cochise and Sonsiere the Indian girl, and Slade, who'd lost his family. Well, Jeffords? Who sent you here? The President of the United States. With what power? Full power to make a fair treaty. Well, fair is a strange word, General. It means different things to different people. What does it mean to you? Equality for the Apaches, and freedom on their own lands. I'll agree to that in principle. What else? The rest you can talk over with Cochise. Then you'll take me to see him? Alone? Without soldiers? If you say so. All right. Meet him as a great man, General Howard. Tell him the truth. Don't lie. If you do, he'll hate you and your kind forever, and I'll hate with him. Sonsiere. I've been away almost a moon. Has anything changed with you? No. When you went away, I, I became frightened. I was afraid that you would find your own people sweet again and that you would forget some theory. Can I forget that there is a special and a wonderful and a lasting thing between us? Can you forget? Oh, I tremble inside of my hands. Well, let me touch your lips. I feel... Tom, Tom, we cannot come together like this anymore. But why not? Someone else has asked for me while you were gone. Who? Naielse. Naielse? He was the one who captured me that day when I was with the Apache boy. He hates you and he wants me for his wife. And you? I refuse. But my parents want him. He, he is an important man. So, Sierra, hear me. I will not lose you. If it is needed, I'll take you so far away that no one will ever find us again. If it is needed, Tom, I will go with you. I am glad of your return, Tom. I've come, Cochise, to speak of important things. First, you must listen. In this land, the birds are the friends of the Indian. They tell me that in Tucson you defended me against your own people. You are my friend, tall one. I trust you. Cochise, you know that I have long held a dream of peace in my heart. And now I bring you word of an honorable peace. A peace that will give you your lands and give you freedom. And who sends this word? An American general of Tucson, a General Howard... Other generals have come before. I spit on their peace. This one speaks with a straight tongue. He says you will have your own lands. There will be no soldiers. What lands? That you must decide with him. If you wish, your people will live right here where they live now. Why does he make such an offer? Well, perhaps because the Apache has fought so long and so well. I will think on it. There is something else I wish to speak about. The girl, Sonsiere. Yes? It is not permitted for you to be friendly with her. She has been asked for. Tom, we must not be seen together. 
Well, then, only a little while. There's so much to talk about. Much unhappiness. Cochise is my friend, yet he tells me I cannot see you. He had a dream? Not where are we? No. No, I'll speak to your parents tonight. They would not have you. It would be an insult to Nailze. Much trouble would be made. It causes trouble already. <laughs> Cochise. You are my friend. Why must I track you in the woods like an enemy? Am I an enemy because I love one of your people? I have told you she is not for you. I want her for my wife. I will do all the things that are expected of a husband here. I refuse Nailze once. I will again. So, I am glad it is the right way. But it will not be easy for you, Tolman. Tell me what I must do. To live with this girl and be happy? You must make time run backwards. You must be born again. Born an Apache, raised as an Apache, and live as an Apache. I am white. We must speak of things as they are. Yes. Where will you live, then? Here? If Son Sierra wishes it. There will always be Apaches who have suffered from white men who will hate you for it. And we will live in Tucson. Will there not always be whites there who will hate you because of the color of your skin? Cochise, you speak as our friend. But know this. I have thought much already. I will marry Son Sierra. It is what we wish. Then I cannot say more against it. Tall one, you will need the strongest go-between you can find. Will you act for me? No other can do it. I will speak for you tonight. And Nahe Ilze? I shall also speak to him. He has bad luck. It has happened to other men. I will wait for you in my hut. Yes. And walk up and down. It is good for people in love. One? Cochise, come in. Now, what did her parents say? You have no luck with women. They refused. Well, then I'll take her away. They can't force oh, us. I make a joke. It is always a good joke. They did not refuse. Oh. Well. Well, that, then we'll be married. It is all arranged. The marriage will be at the next full moon. The parents will want three good horses and saddles. I'll bring them from Tucson. No, no, I will give these things. For a friend. Now I, I wish to speak of this General Howard. You trust him? Yes. Then return to Tucson. Bring him to me. And there is a chance of peace? I give no promises. I will send out runners tomorrow. Apaches from all the tribes must come here to talk. I'll write all these things down that you have said. I'll speak of them with General Howard. Write them, my brother. But remember, there are no promises. Sleep well. I say paper and pencil. Uh, around here someplace. Oh, oh the saddlebag, maybe. What the devil? Wait, I. What did... Now he'll say... Once I promise you death, now I bring it and wash out the shame of San Sire. Now he'll say... You come with a knife to the tent of my friend. We talk of peace and you come with a knife. Give me your rifle, tall one. Now he'll say we will go outside. In battle, I have had no one like you, now he'll say. Our lives were often mixed. Now it is ended. You have betrayed our people. Now the tall one can face the general with the truth of Cochise in his heart. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. 
Thousands of people were first introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them, and anyone may enjoy their benefits. The next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try Anison. You'll like the convenience of Anison tablets, and you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist. I went back to Tucson for General Howard, and together we returned to the stronghold of Cochise. And together we waited while Cochise and the other Indian leaders discussed our peace offer. We could hear them arguing, sometimes their voices were angry. We had to be patient. It was very hard on the general. I had something else to think about. Sonsire. And we'd meet for a few minutes, and I'd fill my eyes and my heart with her. I can stay only a short time. You sit down there, and I will sit here. Well, you are very distant. Soon we will be very close. But now we must not even touch your hand. Well, that's a very cruel law. <laughs> no, now is the time I must work. I prepare the clothes for the wedding, and I must build a special hut for our honeymoon. Away from everybody. Soon we will ride the white horses to our secret place. Well, can I help you with your work? No. In all this, my mother helps and teaches me. And I try to do as I think she did when she was a girl. There was never another like you, Sonsire. Thank you. Now I must go to my mother. Jeffers, for Jesus coming. Goodbye, my sweetheart. All right, General. Come, you are wanted at the council. You explain the map to them? My brothers have many questions. We will answer as best we can. Here is the council place. Go in. You who sit in council, you have asked for Jeffords, the tall one, and the great general from Washington. I bring them to you. Apaches, you have been told of the map. The map is a picture of your land, the Apache Territory, 50,000 square miles. If you make a treaty of peace, this land and this map will be a part of the treaty. I think this part is good. We keep our mountains, we keep our home. I like it. If the chief of the white men dies, what will follow? The treaty will be binding for all time. That is good. I have a question. What if some white man comes to our mountain to take yellow iron? Can we kill him? The general says that such a man should be captured and given to our military. And that he would be judged and punished. And what if a white man should kill an Indian on our land? Then we will hang him for it. That will be something for Cochise to see. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Who else asks questions? Tell when you and the general will go now. I will bring you our decision. May it be blessed by the gods. General? Who speaks now? Who gives judgment? I trust none of it. Gauclair speaks. There is only one peace I will accept. We will put all the whites on a reservation, and then we will guard them. <laughs> this is not a thing of laughter. Gauclair finds this peace bitter, then perhaps he will tell us why. Where will we get blankets, corn, horses? We have always taken these things. Are we to be women now and beg for them? The American government will give us cattle. We will raise them and trade them for our needs. It is not the Apache way to be grandmothers to cattle. No. I am not afraid, I say it. I am an Apache, a warrior. And Gauclear says Cochise has lost his taste for battle. He spits out our victories to drink the milk of surrender. It is not this false peace we need, but a new chief. Now I talk. I say that the Americans keep cattle, but they are not soft and weak. 
The Americans are growing stronger, while we are growing weaker. When a big wind comes, a tree must bend or be lifted out by its roots. We will test this piece. We will make a test of it for three moons. Is this your word, then? He who was the mighty Cochise? I take this arrow, the sign of war. I break it. I will try the way of peace. I have decided. I'll give my word to the American general. The word of a coward. Those who stay with me must keep my word. Let all others walk away. From now on, they are no longer my brothers. If more walk away than stay, then I will no longer be your chief. I walk away. I walk away. Who else comes? One, two. Who else? Go clear, take your women, your children, your horses, your weapons. Leave our territory. Then I leave my name also. I spit on my Chiricahua name and take the name my Mexican enemies have given me. Learn it well as the whites will learn it. And fear the name Geronimo. Another drink, Tom? No, thanks, Mel. You know, I remember the day you first rode out to Cochise. We didn't expect to see you again. We got what we wanted, didn't we? Got our peace. Not yet, we haven't. All right, Slade, a truce anyway. Two and a half months to go. You and Howard have made a treaty with a murderer. Now, listen, Slade. You and your family have been the victims of a terrible tragedy. But can't you understand this is the end of all that? You bring my wife back from the grave and then I'll believe you. Two days ago, Geronimo and his band attacked a stagecoach. Cochise's Indians chased them away. Apaches protecting white men. Now, isn't that proof enough? Proof he's waiting for us to go soft. I say let the war go on until Cochise is hanged. And I say the same thing. Where will you, Slade? Well, then wait and see if Cochise breaks the armistice. Just give it a chance, will you? Give it a chance. <laughs> How is it with the bridegroom? Well, as with all bridegrooms, Gucci. Patience, my friend. The ceremony will begin in a little bit. Now I would speak to you of the armistice. Almost a moon has passed. I think it goes well. There has been trouble from Geronimo's followers. From now on, we will protect all whites leaving Tucson or Fort Bowie. We will guard Apache Pass also. These are good plans. If this peace does not hold, let it be the whites who break it. Must not be the Indians. Not even bad Indians. Now, now you will forget peace and war. Now you will think only of your bride. Come, the ceremony begins. Here is your son, Siri. And here, the medicine man. Oh, Sonsire, the gods have made you lovelier than all other creatures. We must not speak. Let the woman who is to marry stand here. Let the man who is to marry stand here. Your left hand, woman. Your right hand, man. Now, through this knife does your blood mingle. Now you will kneel upon earth, woman. Now for you there is no rain, for one is shelter to the other. Now for you there is no cold. Sonsire, there is no difference now. No, we are the same, wife and husband. I find it strange. I thought so much of peace, but it was always a peace of soldiers. But now I see there is a different kind of peace inside a man. 
I find it now. I'm happy. Do you like that, Tom? You've made it beautiful. And so I will make your life. Sometime. Will you grow tired of me and go back to your people? Sonsira, you are my people. Will you tell me that often? As often as the pebbles in the stream. Until finally you will not ask it or think it. And you'll know how much I am your husband. Soon it will be over. What, my darling? Our honeymoon. Only ten days are allowed. Then we must go back to the village. Ten days together. The world has never seen so many days, my son, Siri. Now you draw the bow carefully. Then let the arrow fly. Oh, Tom, I could do better. <laughs> well, I have to learn, don't I? <laughs> Never mind, Sonsire. When he's a grown man, he will know how to use the bow and arrow. High into the air it went, and right into the canyon. Uh, tall one, you know that arrows are difficult to make. Now you must bring it back. You mean go down into the canyon? Well, that's what... Cochise. Yes. Down there, a white man. He has no place here. Well, I, I know that man. Oh, Slade! Shepherds! I told you they were thieves. What are you doing there? Tracking a stolen horse. Followed the trail right into Cochise's country. What do you think, Cochise? None of my people stole his horse. He lies. I know this man. He's an Indian hater. Now, if we can show him he's wrong, it'll be a good thing. You speak wisely. We will look. I would like to come, please. <laughs> Why not? Soon the women will go hunting, too. Oh, Slade! What? We want to talk. We're coming down. Come on over here. I'll show you the trail. Sincere, Ray, you better wait right Please, here. Please, Tom, I will. Sincere, Ray! Rick! Cochise, it's you they want. Sincere, Ray. You're wounded. Slade. My warriors came. He is captured. Sonsire. She is dead. Oh, oh, no. Oh, God in heaven, no. Slade will be tried by your people. Bring him to me. Give me a knife and bring him to me. No. Bring him to me. It will not be done. This peace is a lie. They don't want peace. It is not a lie. This was not done by the military. Even as bad Indians have broken the law, so have bad whites. The armistice must stand. I do not betray my people or their children. No one on my territory will open war again. Not even you. friends came to her grave. Mel, General Howard, a lot of people from Tucson. They came, and soon the armistice period was through, and we had peace. And this is the story I wanted to tell you, of Cochise, of my wife, Sonsire, whose death sealed the peace, and of how the arrow was broken forever. Our stars, James Stewart, Jeff Chandler, and Deborah Paget, will return in just a moment. And now here's a word from RCA Victor. Consider this fact. RCA Victor is first in television. That in itself is your assurance that television receivers made by RCA Victor are certainly the best you can buy. 
To hold this leadership in its field, RCA Victor has had to maintain the highest possible standards of excellence. Perfect examples of these standards can be found in any RCA Victor television set. From inexpensive table model receivers to luxurious big screen consoles, one factor predominates. Quality. You could easily recognize RCA Victor's unequaled supremacy in television by looking at clear, bright pictures. The best possible reception. And the cabinetry of every RCA Victor television set in any price range reflects the skilled, experienced craftsmanship for which RCA Victor is world famous. What's more, RCA Victor television is million-proof, quality proven in well over two million homes. That, too, is your assurance of complete satisfaction when you buy a television receiver made by RCA Victor. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse presents another great motion picture story. Our adaptation will be Raffles, starring Douglas Fairbanks. And now, here again are tonight's stars, James Stewart, Jeff Chandler, and Deborah Paget. Deborah, Jeff, well, this looks like a real broken arrow reunion. The gang's all here. Isn't all it? except the horses. And the director. Well, the sound man's already gone home, so we can't do much about the horses. <laughs> <laughs> but we can bring out the director. So, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy and Jeff and I would like to introduce the very talented motion picture artist who guided us through Broken Arrow. And directed Bird of Paradise, Task Force, Destination Tokyo. And so many other pictures that bear the name of Delmar Daves. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, Jimmy, Deborah. You all know the idea and the ideal that prompted us to make Broken Arrow. And the audience, after tonight's excellent performance, you also know that the picture is more than just a fascinating story. Through several decades of filmmaking, the camera seldom focused clearly on the American Indian. All too often, he was photographed as a purposeless, murdering savage. If that was motion picture's error... Then motion pictures sought to correct it with Broken Arrow and to restore a birthright of honor to a brave and proud people. Thank you, and good night, everyone. You have been listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Broken Arrow was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of the Daryl F. Zanuck Technicolor production, David and Bath Sheba, starring Gregory Peck and Susan Hayward. James Stewart will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Highway in the Sky. Jeff Chandler can now be seen in Iron Man, a universal international picture, co-starring Evelyn Keyes and Stephen McNally. Deborah Paget appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox Film Corporation, producers of Anne of the Indies. Included in tonight's cast were Ralph Moody, Jerry Farber, Byron Kane, Rye Billsbury, Jan Arvin, Paul Dubov, Herbert Butterfield, Tom Holland, and John Stevenson. Broken Arrow was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons. Screen Director's Playhouse is under the production supervision of Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next Friday when the Screen Director's Playhouse presents Raffles, starring Douglas Fairbanks. <laughs> listen again next week to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening for The Magnificent Montague, starring Monty Woolley, the Saturday night feature of the All-Star Festival.
Now it's night beat. Later, the man called X on NBC.